Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I'm gonna restore or at least clean this uh, uh, this oscilloscope. It's from the USSR and it's the C193. And uh, a few videos back I had uh, the portable version. It was the C1118. That was early 80s, I think 10 megahertz and it was still working super super fine and that one i was really lucky it didn't even need uh, too much cleaning but this one yeah i like to call it a barn fi uh, find but it was not really but if you look at it it, it does it is from the local uh, ebay in the netherlands the marktplatz and uh yeah it uh yeah i'll have a look well as you can see it is a it is a little bit dusty it uh, did came with the probes. I'm not sure it is the probes that came with this one, but it could be because I have two identical ones. Doesn't necessarily say much, but could be. They look uh, just as dirty at least. Um, I think this is a 30 megahertz already. So my guess would be late 80s, but uh, maybe we can find out somewhere with the uh, with sticker. Let's have a look really going to clean it first but the quality of these uh, oscilloscopes is, is really nice and and also they were smart because the other one was uh, you could see it was from the USSR but uh, they changed it because that one was for the France or French Belgian part so you saw French letters and here you can see this one was for Germany so they really put German German descriptions, but here you can see that it was built in the USSR. So uh, yeah, I hope the quality is just as good as uh, as the other one. Let's uh, let's have a clean. Uh, let's have a quick uh, look around. I will take out the probes if that is possible. No, that is a bit stuck. Synchronization correction. Yes, it, it is indeed the 93. Here we have some other adjustments. It look like trimmers. Okay, I don't necessarily know what it is for. On the top, there is another. It's probably for the tube, I think, and what we find here yeah. in the back. Oh, it can also run on DC. Uh, the other one was a mobile, and it could run on 12 volts. And uh, I wonder where is then the DC plug, but you can switch it over to DC, but then I wonder where is the connection for that. It can do 115 volts. Or 220. Okay. I need to find out how this DC works. Oh, here it says DC 24. And you do that with the same plug? Let me zoom in. Yeah. 24 DC or AC 20. So apparently with the same plug, then that, that is a bit. Weird. Let's find out how that works. Okay, even you can put something down. What is this? We have here maybe. This seems to be an output. Well, first, let's clean. Yeah, for the cleaning, I try always to to use uh, at least as possible uh, chemicals. Uh, it's not then gonna clean with water because of course that is also not really great on electronics. But uh, yeah, I, I have here these baby cloths. They have a little bit of uh, it's moisture, uh, but very little. And they have a little bit of lotion, but not that much of lotion that it really gets uh, sticky or uh, so. Uh, 
it almost leaves nothing and it's really soft and it is great for taking the dust out so i i always start with that and um, i have never had that it uh, actually damages the device so uh, i just start with this get most of the dust out and then uh, if it turns out that there are, is some uh, oil residue or other stuff then i try also with this uh, this is moisture kitchen cloths it smells a little bit like lemon and uh, but this one really takes out uh, also oil and grease so uh, but if i don't need to i don't do that because yeah it is already a little bit more chemical but i never had that it actually damages uh, the device so i would just put the time lapse and uh, well this is just Yeah, and this is just putting uh, putting in the hours because it is just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And uh, I will keep uh, putting the time lapse, but I already wanted to show you that I'm indeed kind of lucky because the front really looks still good. If you remove the dust, look at this. It is still uh, bright. I don't see any corrosion on the front, so they really used a good paint. And uh, yeah looks promising so uh, let's continue Okay, that does uh, look a lot better already. Uh, and that was also just uh, a quick uh, clean. And uh, you can really see that the back plate is still beautiful. I will, uh, I will have a closer look. A look at this. This is so much better. Uh, the only thing I like to correct, and we're going to open it for that, is if you remove this, I did that to clean. But then you see there is here two, three millimeters spacing in between. And I think that happened by the shipping or by the storage that it was stored uh, straight up. And it looks like it was stored straight up because all the dust was mostly on the top. So it has been standing up. All the dust has been landing on top of it. And, uh, and, and that, that's why the tube is, uh, I think, slowly drop to the back so we need to push it forward that it is nicely connected again to the front and then it will look even better so uh, I try to open it well I am not sure but I think that uh, I think we can maybe slide it out from the back so probably in the back there are a few screws yes in the feet and I think then it can probably, it will probably open. My desk is a bit small. Now let's try it. Yeah, somehow that makes sense. I think I broke the seal because uh, I don't know if you remember with the 118 but it had some kind of green papery thing on top of the screw and uh, here it is red kind of papery thing so that means it's probably not opened or, or this person also has this seal glue thing ah yeah look at this
it indeed seems that we can just push it forward. Yeah, yes, 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 we can. Okay. Uh, yeah, what is the best way? Let's just like this, maybe. Okay, I will carefully put it on his front buttons and then mm -hmm, it's... Wow, that looks impressive and it's full, full, full of stuff. And uh, I like how they solved certain things, I, I, I will zoom in. This looks like the space shuttle. Wow, it's full, full. And they have here this funny push and pull switches right here in the in the front and you can just pull them or push them but what it actually is it is just a flip switch that i just let me show a bit if possible yeah here you can see it's a flip switch upside down and what you do you just put the flip switch yeah, that's a way of doing it if you need space. And also here is another big... Here is another switch. Same story, you pull the pin and... But actually it's a huge, huge switch. Just a... <laughs> here also. Here they have a switch. And the pot, and the pot is just a pot, only the switch is again a tumble, tumble switch that you just push and pull with this one, and you can just turn like this, and then you use the pot. So they needed a lot of space, and then they just put all the switches in the back, and maybe some switches needed to be at a certain precision because it's high voltage or. Yeah, it's really smart solutions and it's full of electronics and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed how much electronics there is. Also here, oh. Also here, if you have a look, this integrated circuit. Some of the legs are almost shorted. But uh, yeah. It is full, but they did everything is with wires nicely, nicely done. They did take uh, sorry, oh. okay. What do we have here? Look at this all the switches, all the trimmers. Let's have a look at the rest. They protected it nicely. Again, here is a tumble switch that you just, this thing here pulls the switch and then you have a pot here and even a pot here. So this one, takes another pot. So this is a pot, this is a pot, and this one just has a little delay somehow with this thing. Okay, a lot of mechanical solutions. So we need to see if we can push this thing a little bit forward. So you can see the pins here are nearly touching the circuit board. I don't think that is meant to be. Right here, these two pins here. So uh, I think we need to push it forward and maybe we need to release a little bit. Uh, here, there are some screws. 
and it looks like that we can just push it forward. So I'm going to try that. Wow. I hope it's not broken because my God, how are you gonna work on this? It looks like a transformer. A lot of adjustments. Again, those integrated circuits. And I did find a date, by the way. So uh, we know where it is from now. And well, the bottom we already saw. So let's turn it back. And it uh, looks okay from the inside. Too bad. Let's have a careful view. Look at this. It's from 1990, so that was a good guess. So indeed, if I um, if I push and pull the tube, yeah, you can see maybe it is moving back and forth. So I try to push it as far forward as possible, and then it closes nicely. Yeah, it seems maybe some of the uh, maybe some of the rubber disappeared. So I'm not sure if I can adjust it. it doesn't seem to be, it is just moving freely. So let's see where are the screws. I saw one in the back, so I tried to push that one. And uh, maybe that is enough. This one here. Yeah, it's loose. Okay, that makes sense then. Mm, no. Okay, I need to find out which. Okay, I think I found the problem, and it's not that screw that I was trying to fasten. If you look inside here, I hope I can show you. We zoom in here. Here, there are here two that you need to tighten and the plastic uh, thing is just broken there so it's not stuck anymore okay i think i'm going to be very practical to solve this because this is just moving and you don't want it uh, all your or your cables are going to break after a while uh, but also i don't want to take the whole tube out and maybe break something so what i did i just cut a little bit of this foam and uh, this is just going in the back. And I also don't want to change something in the cooling. So I'm just going to put it here. And this will just push it. And so it will be in place. This is very rough, so that will be fine. And the cooling will also be fine because I didn't close any of the holes. So. I will just put this and I just need to shave it uh, to size and I will cut the layer from layer just to see when it's stuck enough because I already cut from here and I can cut some more but this will probably be good it also is a little bit flexible so we see how this goes so I've been cleaning some more and even the power cord uh, looks like new now and if you saw it, this guy is crazy with this DC on the power plug. Let me show you what I found after I cleaned the plug. Yes, they really do use the same plug for AC and DC. This, for me, that would be super dangerous. If you make a mistake with the switch and you just plug it in, poof. I am surprised that this was uh, approved by the even by Germany, because they always had the tooth, I think. And, uh, but apparently it, uh, or it was just before, I don't know. But it is uh, apparently possible. I would have expected like in the other oscilloscope, there was a, a separate uh, input for the DC, but here it really just seems a switch and a marking on your plug, so. 
they like it dangerous. Okay, I've cleaned it some more and I, now I carefully have slided back. And now let's see if we can uh, do that. No, how much space we have? I think it is possible. So we just put this on the bottom right here. Maybe I need to lie it down. Just yes, not too much force. Perfect fit. So we put back the screws and it will push the tube forward. It is just a 3-4 millimeter, so it's just a slight, slight push. Perfect. Okay, that looks a lot better. The screen really touches correct. I like that. So it's right to the front. It really doesn't want to go back because it is really stuck. Uh, before I light it, I really want to see if all the switches are correct. It is really to 220 and to AC. So that should be correct then. And let's see if we can get some signal because it does look nice. Uh, everything to its default, I think. But this is just the time. It will be fine. Synchronization to the internal one, internal one. One, one and two and two. So let's do one. It is to the ground, so then we should see nothing. This position we put in the middle. Position in the middle. Here we have some brightness in the middle. This one in the middle. Okay. This I do not know exactly. Channel 1 and 2, it seems. But you also made the selection here, so that doesn't make sense, so I will leave it as it is. This one also. Let's put this also in the middle. This is manual, then it's this probably auto. And AC and AC and DC synchronization. Okay. Plug is in. Yeah, maybe this. Yeah, there is a light. So, Speichung means power, apparently. Okay. Uh, if we put it to zero, yes, a line is coming. It is uh, not that wide, so. It's triggering on both channels, I'm not doing anything. How I can do uh, this? Okay, position makes sense. I do not one and two. It's alternating. Okay. Now I need to see if I can get, what is this? Now I need to see if I can get it. Okay, focus, brightness. This is focus, I think. Oh, the backlight, cool. Even has big light. Orange. Okay, there is a cushion with a screwdriver. And okay, in the dark that I'm feeding in in channel one a uh, sign, a channel two, a square, and then you can also combine the two, and it looks like this. But the only thing it, it needs to be wider. 
So uh, I will look for the surface manual and then maybe we can adjust it wider because I have not seen any controls on the outside that were easy accessible, but uh, it looks already a bit better. And now you can see better. It really needs to be wider and this one just moves it a little bit. So that is not it. So, uh, and uh, channel one. Channel 2 and combine. But it looks amazing. No. Aside from that, it doesn't work. <laughs> it is good. So that's it. Was a, was a good cleaning. It does look a lot better. There are a few details that uh, I need to take care of. That is the, that the screen is going to be a little bit uh, wider. But uh, yeah, even the adjustments uh, seem very good. I put the five volt sign and it actually was exactly five volts. So that is still good. The triggering is again amazing. These uh, scopes from the USS are really, really are good with the triggering uh, because I remember with my other old analog scope, you really need to try a lot of things and uh, but here it just got it and even you have a manual you switch it over and then you have a manual triggering so it's really really it is kind of advanced so uh, nice I will show again what it looks like close by so that's it Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.